Hey everybody, this is Stanley Alexander uh, and I am the founder and uh, managing director of Destination Pick, a uh, travel management company. It's great to be here on a Friday uh, and this is part one of the series of Vlog On with Stan the, um, uh, and this is a witcast that we're doing. Uh, and today we have somebody very special and just to give you an idea of why we're doing this uh, vlog sessions is to uh, bring up all those small to medium um, entrepreneurs, all small to medium enterprises who are here in this Dallas region to bring awareness uh, and to tell about their story. Uh, and uh, today I want to uh, introduce you to the one and only, the beautiful, <laughs> the gorgeous, the amazing. Uh, since I've come to know and to know about her story, pretty much intrigued. She is the founder and CEO of Elan Events and also Blue Frame uh, Performing Arts. Uh, and we're going to be, let me introduce you to Christina Thomas. Christina, thank you, thank you so much for being with us. And it's great that you helped us kick off this. And I really, no, really I'm appreciate excited. it. Uh, how are you doing today? Great. I'm very excited for this. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate for taking our time, uh, especially in your busy schedule. I understand you have a lot of weddings coming up. Um, to start off with, tell our audience about about yourself uh, in, you know, apart from all the questions in terms of the startup that you yeah. had and so on. Tell me about yourself uh, in general and then we'll take it up from there. Perfect. Well, um, I started many years ago in 2012 is when I officially kicked off Elon Events, but there was a lot going on before that. Right. I went to school for management and marketing at UT Dallas. Um, at that time, I was already heavily involved with Blue Flame. Right, um, right out of high school, actually, is when I started my first dance school, um, it was my senior year. From there, I is when I joined with Blue Flame. And at the, fa the founder at that time, her name was Nirmita Shukla. Okay. And so we kind of partnered up. We created this great program for dance and arts for kids. Right. Um, and from there, um, I was still in school throughout the whole time. Midway is when I started having this passion for events, entertainment, things sure. like that. Because within Blue Flame, we go out and do a lot of performances for weddings, right corporate functions, and it just seemed like it fit. Right. Um, so probably my last year is when I was like, I'm just going to try this, yeah. try it out, see how it goes. I mean, post-graduation, I can decide what I want to do. Sure. But I started kind of just put out this website, created this company, and just started advertising a lot of events. Sure. Um, and I was really surprised to see, like, you know, I started in a September, and by November, I already had my first inquiry, wow. which was great. I mean... Starters, it's hard. You have to convince someone, hey, yeah. you're hiring sure. somebody new in the industry. Expert, right. But it was great. You know, so I started there. And then after that, it just picked up. And mm -hmm. then, so that was in 2012 when Elan started. And then 2016 mm -hmm. is when I officially bought Blue Flame Performing Arts as well. Okay. Um, and so with that, it's the arts, entertainment, classes, all of sure. that. So right now, I'm running both of them simultaneously. I did right out of um, college start working for a corporate, corporate company called Provista. Right. Yeah, so at that time I was doing managed marketing for their for them, All right. and it was a lot of internal communication events, so it was very relatable. Sure. So I did that for about three and a half years, and then finally quit and took a lot of events and Blue Flame full time, and it's been great. Big big step. It was a huge step. It was a hard step because so much fear that comes with doing something like yeah. that, but it just seemed right. I had all the support that I needed around me. Sure. You know, and all my past clients were really happy, so I was like. You know, maybe if I focus my energy, like, they would be even happier. You know, it would right. give me more time and give me more time to expand even. Sure. Yeah. Right. So, um, how did you land up in Dallas? I'm sure family being here, yeah. but um, is it something? No, actually, I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. All oh! My whole life I've been here. Okay. Um, I think I'm probably one of those diehard Dallas people, never going to leave. <laughs> Always going to be right here. Maybe we might expand business sure. in different areas Absolutely. but definitely yeah. want to be here for the rest of my life so so what is that one thing that you like about dallas i mean one or i mean there could be several there things, could be yeah i agree food i think dallas the biggest thing is i think it gives you a balance of everything sure. you know you have your city life you have your suburb life yeah. you have the big things small things i mean i know traffic is crazy but yeah. it's also dependent on where you live that it's crazy Absolutely. um but i just think you get a little bit of everything here the arts the food the Right. You know, the culture, I just, I love it here. Right. And, I mean, it's Fortune 500 companies exactly. are just, I mean, so you, I can totally imagine that. Yeah. Um, and I understand 
Uh, any inspiration or the passion towards wedding planning, which you've mentioned. So did you have somebody in mind that you followed and you saw that, you know, I know you had the passion yeah. there, but what was that thing, one thing that you really triggered to say, this is the step I'm going to take on this day that I want to do, be an entrepreneur, a sole entrepreneur and manage yeah. something I have really great passion for. What was that moment or a, a turning point story in your life that led to that? Moment. So for me, I've always been involved in like Indian arts, Indian culture, sure. things like that. And there's a ton of great planners and talents across the nation, mm -hmm. even decorators, things like that. Because actually when I first started, I wanted to be in decor. That changed very quickly because I thought I saw the amount of work and manpower it mm -hmm. takes. And I wanted to do something together. But there were a ton of different companies and things that kind of sure. inspired me. Right. And I guess I've always been that person where I was constantly involved, constantly busy, whether it mm. be work or dance or school or church even, you know, right. always right. involved. And I just felt like, you know, this is something that I'm, I personally think I'm good at. Sure. Um, and if I really focus in on it, I can mm -hmm. make it even better. But it, it just started basically with everything that I'd already been doing growing up. And right. South Asian weddings seemed like the way to go because it's already like the culture I love to be involved with, despite being right. born and raised here, right. like, I love keeping with my roots and things like Good. that, so. Good. Um, and I always, you know, when I'm, I know you're, you've done your, uh, uh, having done your graduation and your, um, did you do a certain, or over the time, not during when you were studying or your bachelor's or your master's, uh -huh. was there a certain of a, like, in my personal, uh, when I started my startup, I did, you know, I kind of go back and think about the case studies that yeah. I did. So did, was there, if not a case study, did you do something specifically to figure out, oh, these are the elements that I need to be an expert? Of course, which exactly, you have to do. But yeah. was there any specific scenario that we really felt like that I, you read through an article or a journal that just, you know, overthrew and said, I guess I can do it because I have the caliber and I could have the team. So is there yeah. something research specifically, you know, when you start up? Yeah. Was there anything specific? So when I was starting, I mean, it was more of my knowledge of the industry that I already had from being in okay. the arts area. Right. But obviously when you start something new, you're like, I mean, especially when I was very young at the time. So I was like, you know, I don't have a ton of money to invest at that right. time. And I want to do this right. I want to be, make sure this grows. Sure. So there was a lot of online research I think I did. Okay. Um, even right. in school, I did my management classes. I took some specific events courses. And then after that, I did get certified. So you learn different things by going to different industry workshops, right. industry classes, okay. things mm -hmm. like that. Sure. Oh, yeah. I guess so that kind of fills in the blanks. I mean, I can't say I started from a point where I knew nothing and then right. I just went with it. Right. I felt like I had enough background knowledge. Right. And then I was just kind of adding to it. Right. So like in the case, I can just tell my personal experience with yeah. you, going to travel trade shows to figure out. Yes how the hotel works, how the airline works, yes. how the tour operators work, um, you know, visa process and all that. So yeah, that's a great insight. How do you balance being uh, an entrepreneur uh -huh. versus wedding planning? It's it's the same, but yeah. there's, there's just doing that planning part of it versus looking at the higher horizon in terms of leadership skills yeah. uh, and how you're going to lead the team, the operations, the marketing, uh, the logistics, all of that. How do you kind of balance that? Uh, I mean, it is it, it is tough. Growing up, I, I did a lot of things, especially I just told you, I mean, yeah. I was working full time, yeah. running a dance company and running an event company where we were doing about, at that time, 15 weddings a year, you know, sure. so you're working eight to five, you're coming back, going to teach dance classes. So it is a lot. Right. Um, I think for me, especially, was learning time management is a big part of it. Sure. Um, but the the bigger thing was, you know, what made me even decide to kind of take this full time mm -hmm. was, you know, you see so many people working their eight to five jobs right. and they're miserable. Some of them, and some of them are happy. Right. So right. there's that borderline, and I, I tell people all the time, you know, everyone's looking for that dream job. Sure. There's no job I think out there where you will be a hundred percent happy all the time. Even what we do, I mean, there are days I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, but right, it's because it's right. everybody has a rough day. Sure. It gets stressful, things like that. Sure. But for me, it was more like, you know, I took that full time because I mm -hmm. was like, I want to focus in my energy a little bit right. more for these two companies. Sure. They do demand a lot. Sure. But then I also want to feel just as passionate as I am right now in 10 years. And I don't want to feel burnt out. Right. So for me, balancing that entrepreneurial life, I mean, 
it has been pretty much just figuring out, you know, I need to set a schedule for myself. I sure. need to also within that set time for my mm -hmm. social life, set time for my family, all of those um, things. So right. it's, it's difficult, but it's all about time management, right. prioritizing, right. and just committing to it, like right. committing to the things you say. Right. So I think those three, I think you point that you've mentioned yeah. are absolutely you've nailed it and i yeah. really absolutely concur with that yeah um and i think you also answered the next question which are the, the challenges that you faced initially uh you've actually covered that point as well yeah uh, anything specifically that you felt when you did the startup that was the biggest challenge that one yeah. element of, of, there are many exactly um could be capital yeah. infusion or it could be uh but anything specifically yeah you felt like this is the hardest part that I had to, and you like, you worked on it and yeah. you got, so is there anything, one or two points that you feel? Or I think the biggest challenge was understanding the market a little bit right. in the sense of, you know, you do have a lot of competition. Sure. I think competition is great. Right. It is not realistic to do every event that happens in Dallas. So sure. you want to have competition. Um, okay. But yeah, but other than that, you know, it was really just kind of figuring out, you know, what is, the market value for what I'm doing. And then what do I feel like is worth it? I think sure. that was the biggest thing because, I mean, if we look at our prices over the last five, six years, mm -hmm. you know, it has changed. Right. But it's, you start off doing something and then right. you realize, oh my gosh, I feel like what I did, I got paid what I was worth, mm -hmm. you know, for that. And then figuring out what is it worth? And yeah. then how is it? Because I'm very big on, I also, like if I was on the other side, if I was the client, mm -hmm. would I pay for this? Or what would I pay for this? Or what do I, what are my expectation? You know? Sure. So that was, I think, the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, I think I came in at a, at a time that there was plenty of competition. Sure. So just the biggest challenge was making them, making sure my clients knew like, hey, you can trust me. Yeah. Just give me a shot, like right. type, type of thing, like letting sure. them accept you. I mean, now we don't run into that at all, which is amazing because it hasn't been that long. But in the beginning, that was definitely the biggest thing, like letting people know, like, hey, I mean, we can do just as great of a job. Right. So it's the value proposition of the exactly. brand, which is Christina is willing to do the sustainability that you have yeah. over the past months, years. And the value proposition is what you do over and above to yes. make that wedding or destination wedding or that event exactly. grand to a grander. So I guess that's just, I yeah. think you summed it up great. Um, what is Christina's strength? Of, of many um, women empowerment. <laughs> I know woman empowerment. I mean, I would say of the many. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think everybody has their strengths, yeah. but I think it's my drive, my passion. Good. Like, right. I commit to anything that I start. Right. I think that's and, the biggest, and that's important for any entrepreneur. Like, once you commit, you can't let any challenge or struggle sure. like bring you back. I mean, I always think back to one of my first weddings, and I mean, you learn a lot about what kind of personality you need to have in this industry, and right. I think. I definitely started off too nice. Like you just want to do everything the client wants. Sure. And then you realize, whoa, they don't sometimes understand where that line should be drawn. And I right. still remember like one of my first weddings, I was like, I'm never going to do this again. And like, I was like, I'm not going to plan weddings. Like wow. I came back so defeated. I mean, the wedding went great, right, right. but it was just how I felt, how I let the client made me feel, I guess. Right. And I realized, you know, like it doesn't have to be that way. It took me a little bit to realize that I was like, you know, I set the standard of how I want to be treated. Sure. And in the same way, I'll provide that great service, great, you know, final flawless event. Mm. But I also have to be, feel good with myself at the end. I right. can't be like, man, like I took all this stuff and like yeah. I'm burnt, you know? So that yeah. was a big thing for sure. Right. And then, um, but I think it's just committing with definitely one of the strengths that I have. Like now, sure. no matter if it gets hard or if it's, just keep pushing through and working hard. And, right. and my team helps me do that too. I mean, I have a great, great team. Great. And I always say that, uh, you know, team effort. Yeah, uh, it teamwork is. Teamwork is dream work. It and, really is. And I kind of best do that. <laughs> yeah. All to the team. I take suggestions and advises, uh, brainstorm, and somewhere down the line, your team, somebody in your team has something so unique. Yeah. And the next time another person, team member comes in here. So I guess going back to the point, how the team saw you develop as a wonderful human being, a personality, mm -hmm. the panache, the panache way of showing who you are. Yeah. And that is depicted through you. And then the team learns it. The next time you do an event, they're like, why don't we do this? Something with yeah. you. you know what I mean to say? That's just great. So yeah. I, I really, um, that's, that's great to hear that part mm -hmm. of your story. Um, any weaknesses that you 
that you felt and you overcame? Like now you're like, okay, I know this. I mean, you know. I think our biggest weakness. Or in your personal life as well. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think our biggest weakness, um, my biggest weakness, what I was doing was doing too much. Right. Um, and so that was something that I needed to overcome and like kind of just make a balance, like have a balance for myself too. Sure. Um, and I definitely think that their weakness was like, the precedent that we kind of set, like the personality we give out, like our expectations. I wasn't mm -hmm. in the beginning necessarily setting an expectation of how I wanted to be treated with the client or sure. what I expected and things like yeah. that. I think that yeah. was a weakness, like kind of being a little bit too nice. nice. Oh, okay. All <laughs> but right. we, you learn, and I mean, honestly, most of my clients are just great right. to work with. They value, and I think most of the vendors in the industry, like One we want those clients to, you know, really value our talent yes. say, and not just look at it as, oh, we're just working. Working. You know, like, we yeah. really did work very hard mm -hmm, to, like, mm -hmm. like tune out this whole thing that we're doing. Sure. So we just expect that respect, I guess. And I think that was what was difficult for me uh, in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. Like, you earned it through yeah. diligence, <laughs> exactly. through commitment, through passion. Yeah. Um, and one of the um, opportunities that you see that you feel like you want to do, yeah. something different, I mean, you into cultural, into yeah. dance. Um, Christina, of course, is a great dancer. I've yeah. seen myself. <laughs> I don't have to be. Uh, so uh, anything that you are perceiving and that you want to do something with and, and you may want to venture into it, like, you know. Yeah. Um, if we look at the arts and dance right. side, I mean, Dallas in itself, we have so much talent. Sure. Um, but all those big dancers and things like that are mm -hmm. all in LA, you know? And so bringing yeah. to Dallas, I mean, I'm, we're really lucky. I mean, I've, I feel like Blue Flame does have the best challenge all in under one roof, and we're really proud and ex mm -hmm. like happy about that. Um, but our biggest thing is we also want to, there's so many amazing dancers out there, we want to bring them to Dallas, sure. want to expose our dancers and our students and the community to like the Indian arts and things like that. So that's sure. something that's one of our goals is kind of doing a workshop series that we're bringing in dancer from across the nation. Wonderful. Um, and that's something we're planning to do this spring itself. So wow. I'll have more details for that later. But sure. that's something yeah, that we're planning to do. Just kind of bring more to Dallas mm -hmm. and bring more of a community amongst kind of the young youth. Like, yeah. you know, let's get together more. It doesn't matter what part of India you're for, yeah. from. Yeah. But there's so much we can learn from each other. Right. Just bringing people together here. Right. Um, on the event side, definitely, I mean, we feel like South Asian weddings are doing great. We have yeah. a process. We have a system. Obviously, there's there's going to be more that comes from that. Sure. Um, I think event side, we're definitely same thing spring 2019, kind of launching our corporate brand. Right. Um, I think a big challenge was when we started with Elon, we did advertise that we do like weddings, corporate yeah. events, yeah. all of these things. But when you look at all of our work, which is still great, yeah. you're seeing South Asian weddings, right? There's no big corporation that's going to be like, Oh, let me hire you to play mm -hmm. my conference. Mm -hmm. But when I think back for the last three and a half, four years, that's all I did. I planned conferences, um, incentive trips, right. internal company events. And I was like, you know, I have a ton of experience, a ton of ideas, all the resources needing right. to execute on that. I was like, we just need to get into that market and let them know this is something different that we do. Great. And don't even look at our weddings work. Right. Look at all of the work that we've already done in corporate right. space. So you have another uh, vertical tours in your brand, not yeah. only just weddings, but events, corporate events, yeah. incentives. So, okay, so that's that's a great opportunity. Yeah, so we right. definitely want to push on that a little bit right. more, especially since I've had that hands-on experience being inside the company and being that events person, right. you know, how much more I can offer from being outside of the company sure. where you may not need that internal events person. Like, right. you should try to partner with an events company Absolutely. that has all their re resources, resources in one place right. right and they're trying to you know the corporates are trying to prevent that to be in-house where yeah. they can outsource it exactly because probably they have a higher hire another person to you know they have to hire another person exactly and if you know that space and that knowledge and so on and so forth exactly having it outsourced you dealing with an expert who exactly who has the resource and the talent to do that and then you're in safe hands because probably you've seen they've seen it on social media mm -hmm. your your all your achievements and all you have done in the past will just really help uh, them evolve and have you have, have a great co collaboration. Exactly. Uh, with so many, many wedding planners and event planners and so on, has in terms of the, you know, the, uh, the price point in terms of, you know, where, where are you going? You're sending a proposal mm -hmm. and you have fun. 
what are the threats that you feel like okay it's become so saturated and i totally understand yeah. that and every industry is that, yeah but how do you overcome that and you know or I mean, for me, I, I think competition in any entrepreneur mm -hmm. is important, having that competitive spirit for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's also a balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have amazing friends that are planners yeah. um, of their own companies, sure. and we get along so well, and we're yeah. there to advise each other on different things, and we support each other. I mean, right. the great kickoff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We had a great a vendor kickoff um, in January, and yeah. it was led by four planners from mm -hmm. four different companies. and. I mean, even after everyone else left, we were hanging out, you yeah. know, so it's... Sorry, I could not hang out. No, that's not <laughs> it's okay. it's like But it's, it really is, I mean, competition is important and you have to think of it as, it's not possible to do every wedding sure. that happens in Dallas, even. Yeah. I mean, and that's not even counting the rest of the nation. Right. Um, and then realistically, are you wanting to work every weekend? Yeah. You know, because that's what it is, you know, finding that balance to like, hey, you will have a personal event at some point. Sure. So you want to, you need to find someone that you can refer, right. but on the price point side of it, I mean, that's always a concern. I mean, I, I can't not send out a proposal sure. with, I mean, there's times where clients will send it to someone else and be like, oh, well, this is what she offered. What can you do? Mm -hmm. People want to undercut you all every right. time. And that's, that's completely fine. Sure. I think for me, it was always finding what do I think is worth my time mm -hmm. and not even just me. I mean, it's not a one man show. I have a, a team of people that have been with me for the past few years and right. I want them to grow. Like, I don't want them to see the same paycheck every mm -hmm. month or I want to be able to give them more because it wouldn't be possible without them. So it's yeah. finding that balance of what I'm worth, right. what I need to charge to make this work mm -hmm. and make it worth it for all of my team. Mm -hmm. And then people will undercut you and maybe, and I, I don't, I try to think of it not as an undercut. It's more like, right. that's what that person feels like is worth their time. Yeah. Great. Right. You know, like if that's what you feel happy, then it worked out for you, but I sure. just have to stick with my, right. you know, like what I feel like, you know, this is what I'm providing. We're providing an exceptional service. We yeah. go above and beyond and this is just what it is, you know? Right. So I don't take it too much as a threat. You have to, otherwise you'll just be editing your proposal every few every months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about that in yeah. our industry, how yeah. that uh, really, is, it, it's great. Uh, we, we've seen a twisting, twirling in our in our travel industry, so I totally relate yeah. to that. It's, it's very cultural uh, competition, but I respect that and I yeah. really appreciate the fact that, you know, the partnership that you have with other, yeah. uh, the, the friendship and the relationship that you have with other wedding planners, that's yeah. amazing. Um, coming, a couple of more questions, yeah. and of course, um, how has social media really triggered where you started? Good one year back. And right now, social media, digital marketing, somebody writing a blog, yeah. website, digital marketing. How yeah. has it been really uh, a cutting edge tool, a resource to bring you from where it was, where you're right now? I mean, we don't necessarily blog. That's something we want to do, but that is a commitment for sure. I mean, yeah. you yourself know. Yeah. Um, but social media has played a huge factor. I mean, right. it is the biggest factor. I mean, yeah. we started off with a website mm -hmm. and a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. and that's all that there really was at that time. Right. Um, there was a lot of like, especially for the weddings and there's a lot of online sites where you could, mm -hmm. you know, have a profile and, but really understanding are people going to these sites? What is the best sites? Cause you could be on 10 different yeah. wedding, Indian wedding website or event websites sure. and you get nothing out of it, yeah. you know? So, but social media definitely played a huge factor. Mm -hmm. I think Instagram was the biggest changer. I mean, people are following constantly and in, and it's interesting to see some of the inquiries I do get uh -huh. and I can track them back to people that have liked our posts or things like that. So you're knowing like, Hey, they're yes. following you. Yes. And then you're in the back of their mind when they're right. getting to their wedding planning mm -hmm. process. So I think it's played, played a huge role in, and a lot of clients will be like, Oh, where's all your past work? Like now it's nice to just be like, Hey, let me just point you. Here's our Instagram page, our yeah. Facebook page and our website. Everything you need to see is here. Right. Um, and the same thing, I mean, we, we put our client reviews. I mean, social media plays a big role. I mean, that's the way you're getting your company out to right. so many masses of people. It's like Facebook. It's the, yeah. the brand speaks through these channels in exactly. all different verticals. It's absolutely, I mean, be it video content, uh, be it events that you do, be yeah. it just uh, that picture that you took at an event, which or something that we wrote a feedback or a testimonial yeah. just triggered and that's my personal experience like you yeah, said yeah that is i am all about testimonials when the client go and travel to a certain place and they come back and like just 
you know, write whatever. And and we want to improve. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. If there's any flaws, we want to improve. It's just, you know, being honestly writing that. And when people write that, that just lets, takes it another level. And when that is being seen by an other audience, which is masses, yeah. it just brings more calibrated uh, mm -hmm. brand value to, you know, one is involved in. So um, I'm going to wrap up with uh, what is the unique selling point of, you know, Elan events, uh, mm -hmm. that one or two things or three things that you can, there's many elements on it that if, you know, they want to reach out to you and mm -hmm. if you can just explain in terms of, you know, in terms of your uh, brand, you know, they can reach out to you, your hashtags. Yeah. If you can just um, let us know about that. What is, what is that that they can, clients can, is it different, the USB part of yeah. Christina? I think, I mean, Elan events, we don't try to complicate the process. That's our biggest thing. Sure. Um, clients will come to me and one thing we really do is we understand everybody has a different budget. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different image of what they want for their wedding. It's right. not cookie cutter. You can't mm -hmm. just be like, this is my package and this is the price and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. So we do definitely go out of our way to understand, Hey, what do you imagine for your big day? Or what do you, what is the budget point you want to say? And sure. some people don't have an answer for that, mm -hmm. but I'm like, then what are the most important things? Like, you know, so we really get to an understanding of what our client needs. Mm -hmm. And then we also get an understanding of what is their personality? Like, how much do they want to be involved in the planning? Like, do they want us to do everything beginning to end? Or there's certain right. aspects that you can just take care of. So sure. we do customize all of our packages to kind of right. fit what that client specifically needs. Mm -hmm. And another great thing is, you know, I have a lot of um, in-house vendors that take sure. care of certain things. So, like, although we are a planning-focused company, that's what we started. Right. We have an in-house. We do custom dessert tables. We do... Um, MC DJ services. Obviously, right. we have a the entertainment side, which mm -hmm. comes from Blue Flame, but sure. I mean it's under the same ownership. So we do package right. it all together. Mm -hmm. We have video services, things like that. Right. Um, and like a, other planners, I think would say, or other vendors would say, like, oh yeah, we have it all in house as well. But it's more like you're pulling from vendors of different right. places right. and then just creating one package. Right. But this is Everything ultimately the they brand. all work under the Elon brand. Right. So, and I think that's a unique selling yes. point for us because yes. there yeah. are certain things that we can just, you knock out half of the things with just Elon. Right. And there's other things that, you know, but our biggest thing is even if we have something in house, mm -hmm. it has to be just as amazing as any vendor out there. I'm not going right. to say, oh, I have a photographer in house mm -hmm. when I know there's no photographer that can compete with some of these Dallas photographers. We right. have an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing list of photographers here in Dallas. Totally not something I'm going to compete with ever, sure. you know, but sure. it's, there's some things that we're able to package. And especially we do that is when we're understanding mm -hmm. kind of what their requirements are and their needs are and their style sure. is. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely one of our unique points that we have something right under the Elan brand. Right. Since you've been in Dallas, I just wanted to ask from, yeah. we all have a corporate social responsibility. Anything that you do specifically in the community in terms of any, you know, one trip, you know, we have a community work that we do. Anything that specifically that you're involved in, you know, near your community, anything that specifically you've done that you want to share to our budding entrepreneurs yeah. uh, that the leadership skills that you have, uh, the sustainability of your uh, startup, and also the fact that, you know, your vision, these yeah. three things. Uh, and also something that you do in the community that you want to share to our audience and that you encourage others. Yeah. Uh, not to the fact that, you know, nine to five jobs now, but these three things, anything that you've been doing in the community, all these things that you want to put the last word out and say, yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Yeah. I mean, our biggest thing, I mean, especially when you have a new startup business, mm -hmm. you spend years like working on the marketing and building it up and building your team and being at these events and sure. actually working that aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, that you kind of miss out on that. What can I do for the community? I mean, right. Blue Flame, I mean, wise, and something that we're trying to do in 2019 is, you know, we want to be that place where kids come not only for dance classes and things like that, right. but where they feel like, hey, they have this mentorship, they can mm -hmm. reach out to us. Um, so our 2019 type of goals for on a more like social side or, right. you know, having these like forums for kids to come, like cultural, I mean, cultural fairs, sure. career fairs, where, I mean, all of my teachers even, they all are successful either in the corporate space and the educational space there, sure. they're all doing something that they should be sharing mm -hmm. besides just teaching a class when they right. come in. So that's our biggest thing. And then on the event side and things like that is we do want to host something where it's not just vendors coming together, but entrepreneurs from any mm -hmm. line of mm -hmm. business where right. there's right. so much expertise we can share, whether it be sure. 
on a financial side mm-hmm. or an operation side that sure. we can learn from each other. Right. Um, and not just that, kind of bringing in those people that might have like a small, like I, they have a passion to do something, they want to get in business. But not sure. Not sure. Uh-huh. Is it a good idea? But right. And also because, I mean, being Indian itself, like, you know, we were raised a certain way to yeah. Yeah. make sure we're always like, whatever we do, it's secure. Se- security. Yeah. And so you're always kind of scared to take that big risk right, or right. anything like that. So we want to build like a forum where they can come kind of like share their ideas. Right. But they get that push of, you know what, right. you don't have to quit everything right away. Like right. it's just about committing more time or doing something small. Right. Sure. Things like that. So we're trying to build different areas where people can come together. Good. Good. I'm partnering with like um, different people in different industries to sure. see, hey, I mean, because just us, we're not going to be able to bring in everyone. I know the people I know. But the point is, I want to bring the people that you know and the people that right. somebody else will know sure. all together. That right. type of thing. Right, right. Well, that's, having said that, and I think what I gauge uh, through this um, vidcast, I believe, is if you have the courage yeah. uh, and if you have the passion, uh, use your talent for of your best of the capabilities. Mm-hmm. And I always say that the three fundamental things I always tell my team, and I think they're really understanding, to have that courage. And I really feel that you should be passionate about it. And also the fact that you should uh, use uh, technology and mm-hmm. talent in its best capabilities that you could. And last but not the least, I always say that and I can see that that you mm-hmm. envision it, as you said, in your responsibility of the community to let others be rising with you mm-hmm. hand in hand. So I guess that summarizes yeah. uh, your story and and it's uh thank you so much Christina. No, i really you. appreciate for you coming here i really appreciate it. and i hope um all the success that you have thank you so much uh, so far all that you have done has been a great achievement mm-hmm. and i hope in um, the months coming ahead the years coming ahead with this passion and we're going to see more and bigger and vibrant the way that you're doing stuff on a more grander way mm-hmm. uh it'll be sh- you know, the community can see it and, you know, you're showcasing it. We're excited to see and Thank all you. your partnership, everything that is coming up. And especially great kudos to your team, which does an amazing job. And Thank I've met a so couple of, uh, of them. They're just yeah. amazing. I really love that, the passion that they have. But thank you so much, thank and you. thank you guys for staying. And I will come up with your part two of this uh, vlog on with Stan. Uh, this is Stanley Alexander signing off, and Christina. Thank you thank so much you for so being here.